All right, what's going on everybody? So this video is gonna be absolutely important to understanding the times. With everything going on, people are in a state of confusion, of hopelessness, other people are very encouraged, their spirits are lifted, and quite frankly, a lot of people are split, they're divided, and they're confused on what is going on. Prophetic words that have been declared, a lot of the truth movement, a lot of Anans, whatever it is, a lot of people are just in a state of being flustered. And I'm going to attempt to make sense of it. I'm going to attempt to give you guys a perspective that if you have an open mind, you can clearly see that, okay, I see where you're coming from. This is not some you know, state of division, some misinformation that you're not trying to cause strife all these things. I'm trying to simply illustrate to you where people are coming from and if you're able to empathize with them, if you're able to see the, the plausible, the feasible reality of what may be happening, then I believe that you can just uh, take a seat, allow God to work, and just see things play out. And so I'm going to give you guys this as best as possible. I took some notes here. I may be able to flash some things on the screen. But uh, if, you, if you're just able to pray through it and ask the Lord to, to open your mind, I believe this will help you. Now, this channel, very quickly, is a channel focused on equipping and encouraging the body of Christ. Part of that means that you have to understand what's going on in the spiritual realm. You have to understand this battle of good versus evil. You have to understand that we're moving into an end times period for which Revelations, Daniel, many uh, biblical prophecies are coming to pass as we speak. And to be able to fully know, you, you may not know everything, but to be able to try your best, if you so desire to, to discern the times, then that can allow you to make better choices and decisions, and it can allow your prayer life to move in such a way where it moves with the kingdom flow, with the, the spiritual uh, temperature and the atmosphere of what's going on, as opposed to your own thinking, because you're basing your reality on something else that somebody said when it could be entirely false and not true. It could be misinformation. It could be fake news. And so that's why you have to be in a state for which you are opened, you are balanced. You don't want to just like believe everything you hear, but if you have the desire to pursue the truth, I believe God can open your heart. He can open your mind to revelation. This is where my calling has come in. The Lord has allowed me to have a discernment, a keen eye for detail, for understanding, for wisdom and research and many things so that I can try my best to present that to you as a body of Christ. And even though many of you don't have the time, the energy, the effort, the interest to learn these things, if you have an open mind to say, okay, I could see generally where this movement is and what's going on, I'm open to that. Just that, that's okay. But if you have a closed-mindedness, then you're going to uh, cause further strife because you're going to cancel other people. You're going to place word curses. You're going to tell people things that for which at the end of time, you will look back and see, okay, I guess that guy was right. I guess this was the true uh, perspective on what you had to have. And so you have to take these biases off. You have to take your Western uh, ideology and, and this hat off and be able to see it from a Christ-like perspective. You have to take certain things, your cultural, your norms, your values of whatever it is that you may have been taught that, that you thought was true, but really it was a form of culture. It was a form of perceiving the world for which it was just one view, one lens to look at it as opposed to being objective and open to it. And so a lot of people are smart, a lot of people are holy, but that doesn't necessarily mean that what you see and what you believe to be true is what is true. So don't confuse, don't conflict your maturity, your title, your longevity in a certain area, your expertise as being correct and right. Because if we humble ourselves, if we uh, be objective and we ask the Lord to, to give me the revelation, the discernment, to give me peace and understanding and wisdom, then you can be in a place for, for which God can elevate you that much more to the understanding of what's going on. And so that's why right now with Trump, with the optics, with everything going on, a lot of people are looking at it in many ways at face value. And if you're trying to see it from a deeper perspective, a multi-layer perspective, then you may uh, you may be in a place for which you can be open to what may be the truth. And again, if you are an auditor, if you're a YouTube uh, a person who's trying to uh, figure out if you want to cancel me or, or uh, all that, I want to just tell you right now, this is the information that other people are believing, that other people are seeing. So I'm not here to spew anything crazy or weird. All, all I'm doing is presenting to you different people, different facets, different groups, and what they're thinking is such that if we are open to understanding them without quickly uh, tr uh, pulling the trigger, canceling them, uh, censoring them, whatever it is, that you can be in a place for which you can say with empathy, okay, I understand you. Okay, I understand. I, I, I want to be open to those things. So with that being said, I want to 
go back to this very quickly. Now, I have a video from November 19th last year for which I, I talk about, I had a couple of videos where I talk about the times, understanding the spiritual battle that is being manifested in this current day and age through the political, the social, the cross-geographic means. And I'm going to flash this quick chart, but I'm not going to go into detail like I did in the other video. But what you have to understand is that in the end times, in what is happening, is that there's a satanic movement and there's a godly movement. That much, as Christians, we should just know as a baseline. But you have to understand that there's a method to organizing this, this end time satanic movement, movement, and that is through centralization. Anything that you see for which you want to centralize politics, global financial currencies, anything with that regard, it is, it is it, it, though it may be godly, it may be good in heaven, in this area for which there is sin, it is, it is not good to have that because it's going to be infiltrated by Satan and be abused and used for his purposes. So anything that is decentralized in this, in this form that we live in now, it is a more godly way to go about things. And so again, there's different governing ideologies, uh, communism, globalism, the liberal, the left, whatever you want to call it. On the other side, there's capitalism, individualism, uh, conservative, uh, conservative values, things like that. And again, none of these are perfect, but in this way, uh, in the way that God is moving certain uh, things, this is the form that's being presented and being used as being the more godly and the right way. Again, sin is in the world and all that. So again, I explained these things. There's different key players, the global elite, the invisible elite, the deep state, whatever you want to call it, the um, cabal, central banking systems, uh, families and powers that have a lot of influence. And then on the other side, you have like the white hats, the patriots, the people, Trump, many other figures that are in this. And then of course, again, I'm not saying that everybody here is satanic and bad, but it's being manipulated, right? The communication methods, the mainstream media, the big tech. And then on the other side, you have independent media, influencers, Christians, prophets. So again, I break all this down uh, and the, the different types of people. I'm not going to go into that, but this is a gen general way to understanding the times right now and how it's being manifested in different layers of society. So I talk about those things. And so I want to challenge, again, this channel and this video, anything that I try to say is in some sense to challenge your perspective because so many of us are anchored on what we believe to be true. We are saying uh, and telling people what's uh, uh, up is down, what's down is up, what's left is right. And and even the Bible says that they will take what's what's good and, and say it's bad or what's right and, and it, it say it's wrong or what's wrong and say it is right. What's good is evil. Evil is good. And so this is, this is the time that we live in right now. And so even yesterday is a good example. Poland, right? The missile that was uh, struck, everybody reacted. They're, they thought, oh, Russia did it. And then people were up in arms like, oh, take them down, NATO, react, react. And without really thinking, taking a, a step back and saying, did, first of all, did they really do it? What, what really is going on? Is it fake news? Like, can we see the evidence? And so it turns out, and again, I, I, you got to be cautious, but even the very next day today, NATO and the U.S., many people and uh, even the U.S. government, they said, hey, this doesn't seem to be uh, a Russian attack. It seems to be from Ukraine. So you can look this up, guys. But so many people, they react on news. They jump to conclusions and they think that this is your perception of what is reality. And so some people don't even believe that. Some people think, oh, it is Russia. Some people think, oh, um, the uh, missile is uh, not true. It is true. What, what, all these different things, right? There's different layers to perceiving and understanding news. So a lot of people are, are saying something is left, but it's right. Something is right, but it's left. And so this is what you have to understand as being your perception of reality, your perception of understanding the world. And so if you're cautious, if you're guarded, if you take a step back, then you can, you can be in a better place to ascertain, to, to, uh, to digest information such that you, you are not being moved by your emotions and your feelings, your ideologies, your hatred for you know, Russia or Putin, your hatred for uh, this and that group or whatever it is, because these things are triggering people. Again, you have to take your hat off. You have to take your bias off. You have to take your ideology off and be an objective, Christ-like manner to perceive things. And only in that way can you be moved to more truth, to more righteousness, to, to things for which you won't have this veil over your eyes to, to react so quickly, right? Now, I talk a lot about reaching the precipice. A lot of people are being triggered by certain events, by certain things, and a lot of that involves economic, political, and social issues, right? So, for example, soaring inflation, uh, recession, the insane gas prices, 
those are economic issues, right? And then you have like border, like in the U.S., the border is being out of control, the crime surging. You have these foreign conflicts. You have the LGBTQ plus movements. Uh, recently, the same-sex marriage in Congress or in the Senate was uh, advancing, right? And then you have, and then to more sort of extreme things for which people, if you don't have an appetite for understanding these things and the possibility of it, is stuff like the control over your finances by the central banking system, by the system that we live in, right? People telling you what to consume, what medications to take, what to believe as fact. You have things like the depopulation efforts through these medications and unnecessary fear mongering, right? The whole COVID thing supposedly being a big amplified issue of things for which it got people to stay indoors, to be fearful, to have statistical manipulation by like overlapping death causes, faulty tests, whatever it is, all these different things are areas for which a lot of people are reaching a precipice saying that no more, no way, Jose, this is enough, uh, enough is enough, and I have to be able to step up. So this is the time that we live in. There are certain key issues, key things that are allowing people to reach a certain threshold and a precipice, and they're standing up now. They're wanting action. They desire for something to happen. And so this is why people are praying. This is why people are in arms. This is why people are trying to make change in the world. And so this is the state that we live in. So many people are in different spectrums and scales of this. But point being that whatever hits you, whatever hits home for you, it is at that point for which you want to vote. This is at that point for which you want to pray uh, harder for certain things. This is why certain people are actually going to local levels and doing certain things to take action. And this is what is going on. And now I talk a lot about your perception of reality, depending on your level of intellect, your level of maturity, your desire to research, your desire to go out and really understand a certain topic. The more you do that, the more you have a, a aptitude to be able to consume different difficult issues of the world, then you can be categorized into a sliding scale that I call your, uh, I guess, your perception of reality scale, right? Those people that are, are told, that perceive at face value, that perceive on one end, I call them normies. A lot of people call them normies as well. And now there's nothing wrong per se about the normies in that you could be a fervent Christian, you can be mature in these things, but you don't have an understanding of what's going on in the world, whether it's because uh, of a dissonance, you don't, you've refused to believe it, you have a uh, too much of a hurt from conspiracy uh, theory and various things like that, what, whatever the case is, or you have a certain allegiance to news, certain networks, certain habits, certain upbringings that are going to get you in a certain way of operating in your normal a uh, uh, perception of, of reality, right? Mm -hmm. On the other side, on the other sort of more extreme side is that those that are really informed. And what I mean by informed is that, is that you don't just read, like I always say, a couple of articles. You don't read two or three articles and think that you know something about something. You don't just read a bunch of Wikipedia pages and get informed. You have a, a highly researched, very keen eye to looking up certain things. And it takes and requires lots of time. The other way that you get it is from divine revelation. You get spiritual insight prophetically. You get some kind of download from the Lord. And part of that could also mean validating by getting you straight to certain sources. This is how the Lord allowed me to operate, to have a combination of highly researched and divine revelation. So this is the role that I'm to play as well as I become more of this watchman, apostolic type of uh, calling in the body of Christ. But the point being that there's many people that are also in this role. There are many people that are also researching and understanding, given insight to what is going on. And so briefly, some characteristics of both sides is that if you're a normie, you know that there's probably something off and wrong uh, and happening behind the scenes like satanic influence in industries like the entertainment and the music. You may or may not believe in election fraud. You may or may not believe entirely in the details of COVID, the statistics the efficacy of masks and vaccines. Uh, these people may lean more Democrat. There, there's a mix of Republicans and independents, but really you're operating in this sense of reality for which you have all the different news that is coming at you from the major sources, and you just kind of chug along with life. Now, I don't want to say there's nothing wrong with that, but you have been deceived in many ways. You have been given the wrong information in many aspects. And so this is the objective of the enemy to get you to have it, this frame of mind, to have this sort of deadpan outlook on what the world is around you. Now, for those that are more informed on the other side, 
you believe that there is some kind of a global elite, whatever name you want to call it, cabal, deep state, Illuminati, that there's some consolidated power into, you know, smaller families or ruling elite, and they have a lot of influence and control over the world. And they, they're doing nefarious and uh, population control type of things for which they want to be able to make sure that they have you in check. Now that, again, leads to the satanic kind of influence as it moves to the end times and uh, the other image that I showed you earlier. But point being that in this current time, they're doing certain things, right? You believe uh, those that are informed, they believe in election fraud. You believe in more nefarious truths behind COVID, right? Vaccines is a form of population control, an attempt to shut down the world, uh, to use it for election theft, or whatever that is, right? Whatever that nefarious reason is, that as you do more of this research and you become more informed, this is what you believe. And many of these people are Republican. Many of these people are also Democrat and some independents. Uh, not all, but there's more so on this side. And they believe, uh, in some sense, for a smaller group, a devolution, that he's either still president or commander in chief, or that the military is in control, or there's something going on there. There's tribunals or arrests or di different things that are taking place. Point being that there is something else going on. We don't know the details. People don't know what's going on completely, but that there's something else that the public does not know because there is a form of warfare going on in the world, some kind of a psyops war, some kind of control for the opinion and the narrative of the people, and to win this war without casualties, to win this war without having to uh, shoot a single bullet in, in, in some sense, right? Now, as you do more and more research for those that are informed, many people will brush this off as conspiracy theory, but you will see examples, video examples. You will see evidence of underground human trafficking. You will see examples of child sex trafficking. You will see satanic rituals, straight up demon worshiping. You will see this uh, attempt for advancing woke agendas. You're, you're going to see the, the cause, the reaction. You're going to see the intent behind certain legislation, certain movements, right? Sexuality, for example, questioning the biblical idea of man and woman being the only genders, the LGBTQ plus uh, advancement and protecting the same-sex marriage stuff. You will see the election fraud, the manipulation, the interference, and removing the power of the people. So these are things that when you become more informed and you're researching, you will see the these things. Now, again, if you're in a place for which you think, oh, that's misinformation, you don't know that, blah, blah, blah. Again, I'm telling you that there is a dissonance, right? There's a knowledge gap. If you're not in a place which you are informed and you see actual evidence of this, you cannot speak from a place for which you think you know what the truth is unless you get there, right? And so again, a lot of people, they brush it off as a coping mechanism. Oh, that's conspiracy. That's weird stuff. But again, I'm telling you that as you get deeper, and again, you don't want to believe everything, right? There's some things that probably is just made up. There's a psyops going on. So people are seeding bad information too. But you have to be careful. But at the same time, with your discernment, as you see certain things, things will make sense to you. God is going to give you peace in knowing what that is. So again, I'm all, all I'm here to say is that there's a scale from left to right of how much you are informed and how that dictates your perception of reality. Now, let's talk about what's going on with regards to Trump and uh, all of this movement that's going on. So the again, the degree to which you and level for which you are informed will shape if you are on this left side for which you are perceiving things at face value or if you are on this other extreme side, which, and again, I don't mean extreme in a bad way. I mean that you are thinking outside the box and think and, and believing that there's something else going on. And this other area is having a multi-layered view of what is going on. So if you are thinking things at face value, again, you are one of those people that you may be consensus driven, right? Majority of the people, they have to believe it, then I'll believe it. You have to believe in only what a major organization or a credible group would, would validate. You would look at certain groups as being too extreme, like QAnon and these things. You have no idea what that is, but you just heard about it and you think it's bad. You believe what the mainstream media says, what Fox says, alternative uh, certain people would say, and all these things that where you, you just, you have to believe that that's what the rational reasoning is, as opposed to this crazy stuff that you believe is, is, is wacky because you're not into that area and haven't fully researched and gotten yourself and, and your feet wet in this area. Now, the vast majority of people are in this 
face value group, right? They don't have the time, they don't have the effort, the energy, they don't have the openness to be able to see that. So these are hundreds of millions of people, and I'm talking in the US. If you are a multi-layered person, then you believe that there's something deeper going on. You have a openness to conspiracy type um, theories. You have an openness and uh, an understanding of the Q operation, right? People call it Q and on, but it's really Q. And, the, and uh, separately, there's Anans. Anans are people that are researching, they're understanding, they're trying to gain insight. So there's a community around that. Akun forums, even Reddit, you got in, on Telegram, True Social, many places are here for which they're trying to figure out what is really going on, right? So this is the Anan community. You also have in the Christian community, prophetic declarations. And now I've given a lot of prophetic words and dreams and things like that, but people that have a spiritual foresight for which they're declaring the heart of God in this area, this is also in combination and conjunction for which people don't believe it, they don't see it. And this, it also works uh, in this multi-layered view. And so you have millions of people uh, very much less than the hundreds of millions of people on, on the other side, but there are uh, a lot of Christians, there's a lot of Republicans, there's some Democrats, right? But the vast majority of people are face value people. And so within this sort of multi-layered view, the way you can look at it, and again, this is dependent upon where you stand in your perception of reality. The way you can look at Trump's speech, the way you can look at the operation that's going on in many things is that the way you can look at it stems from where you stand. And so that's why it's very hard to explain to people what you believe because they're speaking over each other because they're based in a different perception of reality. You are on a different sliding scale of whether you are a, a face value normie or you are a multi-layered informed person. And so the problem that people have been coming to right now, especially in the Anon and the multi-layered uh, group community is that seemingly because Trump has been so overt and so open about election fraud in particular, about all of the things that are going on with the left, the radical and all this stuff, why would he announce a 2024 election a candidacy or quote unquote a 2024 uh, candidacy when he knows that it's not going to work? Like you, you saw what 2022 was. He's been talking a lot about that, about it being stolen and many things. Why would he operate under the same facade of cheating and, and things like that, and then uh, supposedly uh, concede the 2020 election, right? So this is sort of the conundrum that people are trying to, to fathom and um, understand. And again, the only way you can possibly understand this, and again, I'm going to give you guys two views on this, the face value view, as well as sort of the other multi-layered view. You have to understand that if you still stick with this operation, trusting the plan, whatever you want to call it, the Q stuff, uh, the operation, the military stuff, because there's a war going on, you have to realize that there are certain moves and counter moves that are being made that we may not fully understand, but it, it allows things to be flushed out, right? So Trump's operation, if you want to call it that, from yesterday, there's a reason for which it has a different optics play. It has, there's different audiences, there's different objectives that you have to understand. And so even as the speech was being made, a lot of people were dissecting it from different angles. If you're dissecting it from the face value perspective, then you are just going to see that, oh, this guy, he um, lost 2020 supposedly, and he's just gonna go back to 2024, and he's keeping his options open, he's trying to uh, campaign early and things like that. And so a lot of people are just seeing this as just this continue continuation of what's going on. And so it, it allows status quo to keep going, it allows the least amount of distraction of uh, various issues that may avoid civil unrest and civil war, whatever it is. And people are just going to see it as, okay, like I'll support him, blah, blah, blah. So this is what is happening at, if you, if you want to say face value, because as he is trying to tackle uh, these other issues like election fraud and whatever it is, he's still trying to continue forward in this realm, right? And even though a lot of people on the other side, right, on the the informed, the multi-layered side, these people, even though a lot of people were disappointed, you have to look at it in a deeper way, right? Again, Trump has been overtly quoting Q. He's been talking about the storm. He's been talking about a lot of things. Why would he come out and seemingly do these things? But here are some theories. Here are some ways to look at it, right? So the announcement is a distraction by the White Hats 
being put into play intentionally so that if the military takes over for election fraud, then Trump won't be anywhere to be found, to be blamed, right? And that blame can uh, distance himself as other things happen, the global issues, whatever global issue is going to be triggered, uh, whether it's the uh, U.S. losing its reserve uh, currency status or some perceived foreign conflict, some kind of uh, war type scenario among global powers. And so that when he is brought back or when he is unleashed, that that unleashment is a stronger sort of a validation of him being there to, to help out and to save this situation, right? Another way to look at it is that it's a complete optics play to lull the deep state or the elite or whatever it is, the left, into a false sense of security, thinking they don't have anything to worry about with regards to Trump so that they can just continue doing their thing and it's going to expose them, bring them to light so, so that other people who have been deep-seated assets, right, for the enemy, whatever you want to call it, uh, they are being brought out. Again, guys, this is a very, a very deeper way to look at it because you have to understand if there's a war going on, there's different levels for which it's being played out, different scenarios and layers for which something's at the optics, the, the high level at the public level, and then it's there's a reason for it to bring out other things. And so that's a way to look at it. Now, if you want to tie this to, to Q, there's a, a Q November 4, uh, 15th post that talks about a trap and that's a delta to the day for the speech. And so you can bring up many Q. Again, guys, this is not a Q thing for me. I don't focus on Q in this channel. But if you research, there's many people that focus on that. They go day by day on a deltas and Q posts and just looking at it and just seeing, man, this is not coincidence. There's a mathematical improbability of all the things that are being said and what happens and it being posted years ago. And so all of this, whether it's, you want to say it's completely planned out, whatever it is, and you're watching a movie, Point being that if you follow Q, if you follow these things, then you, you would look at it as, okay, this is continued validation of what's going on and setting a trap. And so again, if you watch the, the speech, right, there were clues. There were clues that people took out. So the, his energy level was lower than how he announced in 2016. His voice tone is lower. Now, granted, the stage was not a, a rally stage like being outside, but, but you can clearly tell that there was something where whether he didn't want to say it, he was forced to say it, Whatever the move is that's happening, he, he did it anyway to get that sort of out of the way. So technically, he didn't, if you listen at the end, he didn't refer to 2024 in the same sentence as running for the president, even though people were pointing out, oh, it says 2024 in the podium. Again, guys, a lot of this it could be, again, a optics play. He's also said that not enough people are awake yet. He, he's also said that the journey, quote, the journey ahead will not be easy. Anyone who truly seeks to take on this rigged and corrupt system will be faced with a storm of fire that only a few could understand, end quote. And so again, guys, you can take apart this whole, spe whole speech. You can take apart certain things. But if you understand that there's different optics, there's different layers and different audiences, the people that want to receive certain things, they will take it as clues and, and, and things like that. Again, referencing True Social, his barrage of overtly quoting Q, all of these things are indicative of the fact that there's something else going on than being perceived at face value. And so again, guys, this touches on many audiences. It's giving validation or hope to different people, but because it's it wasn't what people quote unquote expected, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that we should walk away from this as, oh, like uh, he's conceded, people are wrong, blah, blah, blah. Again, there's deeper things behind it that we have to be able to understand. The other thing that he did not mention uh, even though he's been talking about this all the time on his accounts and uh, various other rallies, is election fraud. So uh, it seems like people are thinking that the reveal of election fraud will come from some other source so as to create distance with Trump's for optics purposes. So whether that's Carrie Lake or the military or the newly elected Congress, whoever it is, there's something else going on for which he has to sort of distance himself. So this speech yesterday, he didn't focus on uh, the fraud part of it. Uh, for for a good reason, supposedly. So again, guys, a lot of things happening here. People are trying to dissect this, really chew on it. Now, I know a lot of people were expecting some crazy things. A lot of people uh, knew that at minimum he was, he was going to announce 2024. But as I've said before in my previous videos leading up to this, that we are in an information war and there are certain moves and counter moves that have to be made. And because people are in a different perception of reality, they're going to believe what they want to believe and they're going to view this the way they want to view it. 
And I've said before, guys, there's deeper meaning behind it. There's different ways to look at it and how you think what's actually happening is happening. So again, guys, I'm not saying this as some defensive cop-out or whatever it is. I'm trying to figure this out. I'm trying to understand the way the Lord has shown me. I'm trying to understand based on research the way that many people are doing this as well. So wherever you are at, wherever your maturity level is at, wherever your spirituality is at, wherever you are in, in the sense of research and trying to discern the political climate and the times, I just want to give you guys this uh, summary of what I believe and how you can take a look at these things and just be open-minded about, okay, there's something else behind the scenes. There's certain things that may have already happened. There's certain things that are not known to the public eye. Whatever that is, we just have to be in a place of humility and say, Lord, okay, these guys are saying these things. These people are dissecting and giving analysis to these things and trying to, to have hypotheses. <clears throat> Other people are saying this is actually true. This is what's going on. Just take a step back and say, Lord, in due time, things will be known and revealed to the public. I'm not worried. God, you have it in control. And again, as I've said before, the Lord has shown me that things will happen quickly. A lot of things will just be uh, brought to light, but it cannot be done in a way for which there's going to be the enemy coming out, having ammo, having a, a reason to be able to attack and to take people down. It's systematically be done tactically, strategically for a reason. So love you guys. I know this is uh, very difficult to con uh, grasp, but that's why I have these labels, right? Advanced. This is a very advanced level video to be able to really understand, to, to cope with, and to walk out of here. Now, a lot of people are still going to have disbelief. A lot of people are going to be hopeless. A lot of people are going to nitpick and just, um, you know, call me out and call other, other people out, right, as being weirdos and extremists and things like that. But don't mind that, right? You believe and, and have peace between you and God the way that you believe that the Lord is showing you certain things. Not everybody needs to be in the know. Not everybody needs to have a deep level of understanding. But just point being that because I focus on equipping and encouraging the body of Christ, and especially as we look at the times in the political, the social uh, climate around us, this is what I, uh, the Lord is, is leading me to focus on and just inform you guys as the body of Christ on. So again, guys, more to come. A lot is going on. Talk to you guys very soon. God bless you.